Hi, it's Miss Dolman here. Hope you're all okay. And we're doing a reading comprehension lesson today. And it's on Ash Wednesday. Your target is that I can retrieve and record information from non-fiction. Remember, non-fiction is real. And fiction is not real. It's made up. Okay, so our starter activity today is something a little bit different. And um, we're going to use the pictures on the slide to help you make up your own story um, and you don't have to write this down it can be done verbally uh, you can tell someone your story but you can write it down also if you wish and I would love to hear and um, to read your stories so I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue not a clue I'm going to give you a little bit of a model example um, of how to use pictures in your own story so One gloomy day, Roger picked up the keys to his new house. He had a new house because he had been so lucky enough to win the lottery. So he bought this massive house. But the thing was, Roger was rather lonely because it was just him and his cat Ginger. Now, the most peculiar thing about Ginger was she wasn't like an ordinary cat. Do you know why? Well, I'm going to tell you. Because she loved to eat bananas. I know, bananas, you say. What sort of cat eats bananas? But Ginger was no ordinary cat. And I'm going to leave my story there for another day. What will your story be? But remember, you need to include all the pictures in your story. So a new slide for you, a new part of the video that you'll see in all lessons now. Um, our today's target is I can retrieve and record information from non-fiction, like I said earlier. But then we have success criteria, which is how are you going to achieve? What do you need to do to be successful? The criteria that you need to be to complete the lesson. So the steps are read, li read or listen to the text, read the question, find the key words from the question in the text, retrieve, that's what you're doing, and record your answer. It might not make sense now, but we'll go through it back, at, we'll go through it again at the end of the lesson to see if you completed it. And then we have some emojis to say, did you meet the criteria? Yes, you did, some of them, or you're really not sure at all about the lesson. Okay, so let's begin. Ash Wednesday. So what is Ash Wednesday? Well, Ash Wednesday is the day after Shrove Tuesday. It is the first day of Lent in the Christian calendar. Let's start off with our first question. When is Ash Wednesday? Remember we are retrieving, so the answer will be there in the text. Pause the video whilst you're writing your answer down. Second question. Ash Wednesday is the first day of, is it Easter, Palm Sunday, Pancake Day or Lent? Tick one answer. Again, pause the video after each question and then we'll mark them shortly. When is Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday is the day after Shrove Tuesday. Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent. How did it begin? In the Bible, it is written that Jesus Christ spent 40 days in the desert where he fasted, which means he didn't eat during the day. The devil joined him and tried to make Jesus prove that he was the son of God. The devil tempted Jesus with different things. Jesus never gave in. How many days did Jesus spend in the desert? Remember, we are retrieving, find that answer, pause the video while you're doing that, and record it by writing it down. Which of the following is closest to the meaning of the word fastest, fasted even? Tick one. Does it mean ran very fast? Does it mean didn't eat? Does it mean went on a long journey? Or does it mean tempted? How many days did Jesus spend in the desert? Jesus spent 40 days in the desert. 
Which of the following is closest to the meaning of the word fasted? And it means didn't eat. Lent. The time of Lent lasts 40 days, which is the same length of time Jesus was in the desert. Many Christians see this as a time to get ready for Easter. They think about Jesus' time in the desert and how they might avoid the temptation to do things they should not. How long does Lent last for? Pause the video whilst you find the answer because you retrieve him. Lent lasts for 40 days. What happens on Ash Wednesday? On Ash Wednesday, many Christians go to church. The priest will ask people to go to him and he puts ashes on their forehead. The ashes are put on in the sign of the cross. And the priest will say, repent and believe in the gospel. This is to help people ask God for forgiveness for anything bad that they have done. What words does the priest say when putting the ashes on someone's forehead? Remember you're retrieving the answer so it's there in the text. Pause the video whilst you find it and record your answer. What words does the priest say when putting the ashes on someone's forehead? The words the priest says are repent, repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel is part of the Bible. Where do ashes come from? Traditionally, the ashes come from the palm leaves which are used in church during the Palm Sunday celebrations. Here is a picture of some palm leaves. After Palm Sunday, the leaves are burnt and the ashes are saved for the next year so that they can be used on Ash Wednesday. What do they do with the ashes once the leaves are burnt? Remember you're retrieving the answer. Pause the video and write down. What do they do with the ashes once the leaves are burnt? They save them for the, for the following year. They save them for the next year. Modern traditions. Traditions that happen now. So from Ash Wednesday, people often give something up until Easter Day, such as sweets, biscuits or chocolate. And this is because these types of food are seen as temptations and it reminds people of how Jesus fought temptation in the desert. And often people see it as a time to do good things, like volunteer at a charity or help others in need. People often give up sweets or chocolate for Lent because Tick 1. They want to lose weight. They want to resist temptation like Jesus did in the desert. Too many sweets can be bad for you or all of the above. Remember to tick 1. Pause the video. Remember you retrieve him. People often give up sweets or chocolate for Lent because they want to resist temptation like Jesus did in the desert. Okay, so we're going to use the information in the text to match the sentences up. So we're going to use what we've just read to make these sentences match up. So we've got from Ash Wednesday, many Christians give up things like, people often do good things like, and people give up foods they like because... The end of the sentences are help others in need or volunteer at a charity shop. Jesus resisted temptation in the desert and biscuits, sweets or chocolates or chocolate. So read one part, one sentence, one part of the sentence first and then match it to the second part of the sentence. Pause the video whilst you're doing that and then we'll mark them. Okay, so from Ash Wednesday, many Christians give up things like help others in need or volunteer at a charity shop. No, that doesn't make sense. Jesus resists temptation in the desert. No, that doesn't make sense. It's biscuits, sweets or chocolate. People often do good things like help others in need or volunteer at a charity shop. And people give up foods because they like because Jesus resisted temptation in the desert. So tick or fix your answers. Tick the boxes to say whether the sentences are true or false. So, Ash Wednesday is the last day of Lent. If you think that's true, tick true. If you think that's false, tick false. But you can only tick one of the boxes. At church, a priest will put ashes on people's foreheads. Is that true? 
give it a tick or is it false give it a tick remember it's either true or false it's not both the ashes come from palm leaves true or false tick one and in the desert Jesus gave in to temptation true or false tick one pause the video whilst you're doing that so Ash Wednesday is the last day of Lent is false it's the first day of Lent at church, a priest will put ashes on people's foreheads is true. The ashes come from palm leaves. And in the desert, Jesus gave in to temptation. He did not. So that is false. Tick or fix your answers. Now we're going to fill in the missing words. To remember, this is all about what you've already read in the video today. From Ash Wednesday, people often give something up until something something such as sweets biscuits or chocolate this is because these types of food are seen as something and it reminds people of how jesus fought temptation in the desert so what i'd like you to do is pause the video read through it again you've got a two word answer here just to give you a clue and you have one word answer here so fill in the missing words what could they be from Ash Wednesday people often give something up until this is because these types of foods are seen as something pause the video while you're doing that so from Ash Wednesday people often give something up until Easter day be Easter Sunday Because that's why we give eggs to each other chocolate because it's a sign of oh you've, you've given up chocolate have some and this is because these types of food are seen as tempting or a word similar they're seen as tempting and you need to give up temptation Pause the video whilst you mark them. So we're returning to this now. Your target today was I can retrieve and record information from non-fiction. So did you read, listen to the text? Did you read the question? Give yourself a tick if you did. Did you find the key words from the question and then look for them in the text? That's the retrieval part. If you did, give it a tick. And did you record your answer? Did you write it down? Give yourself a tick if you did. If you've ticked all of them, then you've got a big smiley face. If you tick some of them, then you'd be the middle emoji. But if you didn't really, you did one. And you didn't follow all of them. And you're not sure about the lesson. Hmm, you're thinking about it. Maybe you need to have another go. Or we need to work on our retrieval skills. So which one are you? Draw it on your piece of paper, your emoji, so I can see how you think you've done. And finally, don't forget to share your work with us in school through WhatsApp, email or go on a walk to the post box. We love seeing your work here. At Mr. Ba Magle Mr. Baglin and I can't get my words out today. So please, please send us your work. It's so lovely to see and thank you for everybody who sent your work in so far. Um, missing you all, really looking forward to get back into the classroom when we can. Uh, stay safe everybody and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye bye for now.